All right, next let's take a look at data binding inside Unity with a custom architecture. So this is the data binding demo off to the side. So in the data binding demo, we're gonna see how in a project that has MVCS added, how would you have data binding? Now data binding is meant to have an easy reusable pattern to sync values across different domains. So if you have two classes and they both have a message text value and you want, if one of them changes the value for the other concern to hear it. And if the first one hears it, then it changes it, then the second one hears it. So having two-way binding. So let's take a look at an example. You can imagine how useful that would be. Now this demo is part of the MVCS architecture for Unity course which you can find the link for below. It is a paid course and it's on discount now because we're celebrating having over 6,000 students already. <clears throat> Hopefully by the time you watch this, you'll see even more students there. The course itself covers all sorts of different topics, Unity, software design, mini MVCS as well. And in the extra content, we've added 10 more demos on top of what was already there, and we're gonna go over one here. We're gonna look at the data binding here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data binding by jumping into Unity. So here inside Unity is the project. If you follow from the Git, the free Git link that has the whole source code, you can bring in the package with the instructions there, and then you'll just go to samples and click import. Now I've already done that here for the sake of this course. Let's go to the more folder and look at the data binding example. So let's take a moment and look at the data, the, the structure of the folders here. So inside data binding, I have a folder for with mini because some of the earlier demos, I have a version without mini, if you wanna see a traditional approach in Unity and then with mini. This one, I only have it done with mini, which is what we're looking at here. Then in the resources folder, I've got a couple prefabs here for uh, the two different views that are gonna be in the app. I've got the scene, which I'll run in a second. And then I've got the source code. Now, as is common with these demos and best practices for mini MVCS, whenever you run one demo in um, Unity, you wanna structure it so the, the source files for controller, model, view, and service, if you have it, have their own dedicated folder. That way you can easily see the different separations of concerns. Cool. So let's run the demo here. I'll make it nice and big. Now let's take a look at this. So here we have two different views. You could think that this is part of one layout, but they're actually two prefabs. So we put them out there and we want to be able to edit this one here and say, hello world uh, from the left. And notice both text fields get updated in real time. Let's go over here and then say, I am on the right. And you can see that both get updated. So we have two-way binding in the MVCS. So let's see how that's done. Now, as I may have mentioned in an earlier part of this video series, Unity did, historically did not support any two-way binding. Then they've added it in the editor for editing tools. And in the future, it will come to runtime, especially as part of the UI toolkit. So I'm not using UI toolkit here, and that feature for runtime two-way binding by Unity is not yet available at the time of this recording. So I've done a custom solution here. So let's take a look at that. So here in the scene, I have the world, which is a game object that just has the camera and lighting in it. Then I have the left view, which if I move the left, I can't even move that. All right, and then we have the right view as well. And then we have the data binding example. Now the data binding takes a reference from the left and the right view. So let's start our code journey here. So here's the mono behavior that is an example running the entire scene. I have the two serialized fields we just looked at, the left view and the right view. And then in here in the start, I'm gonna create a new context. Now we haven't seen this in earlier demos, and in the heart of the course, we don't show this exact workflow.
But here I'm creating Here I'm creating the context outside of the mini and I'm passing that in here. And then I have the left view and the right view. So I create it outside and I pass the same value into each of the uh, concerns. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, uh, there's a different demo where I have multiple minis in the same project. And this is borrowed from that. So creating the context outside of the mini is not explicitly required here. It is for the other demo called multiple minis, which you can take a look at in the series. So this comment is not necessarily required here. Now, let's go ahead and look at the mini. So here, what I do is I have the data binding set up in its own mini. And the mini here is going to take references for the left view and the right view and store them. Then down here in the, it's, this is the initialize of the mini. I'm gonna set up the model. There's one model. I'm gonna set up the view. There's two views, a left one and a right one. So again, no, notice that they're distinct, separate uh, user interfaces. And then I'll have the controller here. Now the, com the controller is gonna take a reference to the model and both views. And as with all minis, the controller is the smartest of the concerns. So it takes a reference to the different parts and it's the controller that's going to be able to have them uh, working together. So here's the controller. I think this is the only concern we'll take a look at here in this demo. I take the left and the right, I store them here, I store the model. Then down here, ooh, I was expecting there to be more logic here. Let me think about this for a second. Yeah, I guess there's, I created this a bit ago. Often, you know, you, what I'm about to show in the views is how they do the syncing. But you could do the syncing of the two values for the text field on the left and the text field on the right in the controller. So I was kind of expecting to see it here. But let's go take a look at the other concern. So here's the model. And the model in MVCS is the dumbest of the concerns. So if controller is kind of the smartest, the most aware, it has the context of the kind of the whole situation, models are on the dumber end of things. It just stores data and that's it. So here it's going to store a string of message and it's going to start with that initial value we saw that says edit this text. We'll run the demo one more time so you can see that being set. Then let's look at the left and right view. So here's the left view. It's going to use mono behavior as we often want to do for UI related uh, concerns. It's optional to extend mono behavior in mini, but here we want to do it. And then down here, here is where the binding is going to be. So let me make sure that this is on the screen in a nice spot. So again, we are in initialize. I just want to be able to make plenty of room here to talk about it. Okay. So the first thing I do is I set this up. So what I do is I have a reference to the model. Now, in MVCS, the controller can always access the other concerns. But as a best practice, you want to limit the access from other model, for example, to view and view to model. You want to be very aware of those. Here I'm making a conscious choice to actually have the view, which is the class we're in, get a reference to the model. And the way that you can do that is by asking the context, which is implicitly available for you, and say, hey, model locator, go get me a reference to the model that's in the game. It looks a little bit like dependency injection, this particular line here, but it's not quite that universal of a solution. The context has locators just for the models, so anybody can get them if we need to. So here in the view, we just get a reference to that model. Remember that model is just holding the string of what the on-screen message is. Then we're gonna do the, the binding here. So if the data model for the message changes, then we're going to listen back to that below. So anytime the data model changes, we will hear it. And anytime the view changes, we're gonna listen to that. So down below, we'll look at the method for each of them. But remember, we're listening if the model changes or if the view changes. 
So down here, let's look at this one first. If the uh, data model changes, then we'll update the view. And down here, if the view changes, then we'll update the model. So each of these two just do the opposite end of this two-way binding, and that's it. So the, the nuts and bolts of this particular flow are not unique to MINI. You could do that outside of MINI, but the, the classes that help it all happen are included in here. And it's especially an interesting topic when we talk about MINI MVCS because data binding is a major plus if you have data binding, then using something like mini MVCS is even quicker and easier to set up. So let's run the demo one more time. I think I uncommented something. That's why we're recompiling there. So here again, we're running. We load from the service, the edit this text. Actually, that was hard coded. We have the hard coded value. And if I type into the left side, we get that. And if I say hi on the right side, it's synced. So that's it. That's data binding inside uh, this Unity MVCS demo.